Today we will be simulating the career of a 99 overall player loaded with abilities, high franchise potential. However, the settings will be a little bit crazy. I've never actually adjusted these, but for today's video, we're going to put sim engine scoring, the draft class quality, the generated prospect quality, and the sim engine shot frequency all too high. Now, the last time we simulated a franchise 99 overall player, they played around 1,750 games, and they also put up... 2136 points so today i want to find out how many points this player can get with these settings turned up on that note let's go ahead jump into it here and see what happens let's get started with ronald mcdangle who is supposed to go over bedard as the first overall and philly moved all the way up to first from ninth chicago's at number two so let's see if it does work out and it does mcdangle goes first bedard ends up going to chicago where he actually plays so it's pretty cool how that worked out and here we go just showing that all the settings are in fact set to high so we should be getting some crazy prospects should be getting some crazy amounts of goals and just points in general obviously signing the entry level contract and going straight to the first line of the flyers is ronald because he's 99 overall no surprises there the team makes the playoffs in the first year they only had 88 points though and mcdangle had 93 a poor playoff showing three points in four playoff games does get the calder which again shouldn't be a surprise he is 99 overall coming right into the league here so checks out the prospect thing clearly working as we have two franchise players going back to back in the second draft konechny and frosty will be the line mates of ronald mcdangle obviously going to be a pretty similar flyers roster as we are still very early on here, the team finishes third in the entire league, and we get 104 points from Ronald this year, which, to be honest, I thought would be more. As we get into the video, I start showing the players that led the league and stuff like that, and not just the guy we're focusing on, which we aren't really focusing on for this. I really just wanted to see mostly what happens when you put those settings up, because I've never done it, surprisingly. So this was a first attempt at that. And I'm not really sure what I expected, but I just thought there would be more. However, it does start to heat up here, so do not fear. The drafts kept bringing the franchise players early on. We got another one there. Jasper is going, and I think we will be seeing him at the top of the league a few times. A massive contract. Seven years, 14.5 million. Not too shabby. It's a pretty good ticket. The Flyers finished fifth in the Metro this season. Only 92 points from Ronald. Again, a 99 overall player. Is it maybe just because of line mates, stuff like that? Who knows? But I would think that a 99 overall player with tons of abilities, X-Factors, so on and so forth, would be lighting the lamp. Another franchise player is delivered. This time, it would be to the Ottawa Senators. Jack Roslevic and Owen Tippett are the line mates now for... Ronald McDangle, Jakey O in net, and the team finishes sixth in the league. Another great finish for them. 47 wins, and we see 106 points from Ronald, 113 from Nate, who led the league. A decent playoff showing from McDangle, but still only 11 games, so they really haven't gone on a run that I feel like they should have yet. Mitchkov with the Jets, they would go on to win a cup, and Marchand decides he's done. Just over point a game for him in the career. We do see another franchise player here. So the high draft class setting is certainly delivering. I will give it that much. Jake Ottinger, what a goat. 88 overall. The team does not well. Finished seventh in the Metro. Iserman up there with 128 points. Yeah, that's pretty good. No playoff showing for the Flyers this year. So I don't know why I actually went to that screen, but... Sometimes I'm just like a robot when I'm doing these things, and I don't think. But the Flyers get the first overall pick, and of course there's not a franchise player. They get Witherspoon, who is elite, but still, 79 overall. He's going straight to the first line with Ronald. Let's see how they link up. Unfortunately, they wouldn't make the playoffs, but they did have 92 points. It was just a really strong division, so a successful season and 102 points would be netted by Ronald McDangle. Sydney the Kidney surpassing the 2000 mark love to see that the draft prospects did start to tail off i will say the franchise players became a lot more few and far between 
Whereas early on, it seemed like every draft had franchise players, or at least one. But as we progressed, that did seem to go down quite drastically. Franchise players were not appearing nearly as much as they were at the start. But there would still be a lot of points going on. Panarin joining Wotherspoon and McDangle on the first line of the Flyers. The defense just looks like it does when you start to get laid in simulations. Thought that it would make a difference with the draft pools being set to high, but nope, apparently not. McDangle finishes fourth in the league with 116 points. Still no playoffs, so I don't know what I'm doing here, but um, just bear with me, okay? <laughs> Will Nye the Hockey Guy gets 1,254 points. Solid. As you can see here, two elites once again, no franchise players in the draft. Panarin actually went up in overall, and the Flyers make the playoffs, finishing third in the division. 70 goals would be scored by Ronald McDangle this season. How you doing? That's a really solid turnout and back-to-back -back Rocket Richards. They would also make it all the way to the conference finals where they would be deleted by the New York Islanders. McDangle decides it's time to move. Going over to the Jets, signing a seven-year, $19 million contract. That is substantial. But we are in year 12 here. So when you really think about it, especially considering the contract that Matthews just signed, it's probably pretty accurate, and I mean, he is getting over 100 points every season. I can't believe Nate Mack didn't get 2,000. He also got more than McDavid, but he did play more games. We got Ovechkin Jr. over here, 84 overall franchise player, went to the Minnesota Wild. So let's see how long it takes for him to win a Rocket Richard. I feel like it's gotta happen, right? Only 76 points from the Jets this year, 118 from McDangle, though he'd be second in the league and win another Rocket Richard. The Carolina Hurricanes had a pretty easy journey winning that Stanley Cup by the looks of it, didn't take a whole lot of games. And we see 1,822 points from Nikita Kucherov. And I'm just trying to compare also like any player, because obviously we want to see how many points this 99 overall player gets, but how many points do we normally see from People like Crosby when they retire, Kucherov, McKinnon, stuff like that. And how many are they getting here? Marnsey retires just shy of 1,700 points. And looking at a lot of these retirement classes, they are loaded. There's lots of good players retiring. We're getting to that point. And, you know, obviously, eventually, we're going to get to the point where it's all creative players. I do have a custom roster here that has a lot of the recent draft picks who probably aren't playing for the team they actually got drafted for. Bedard was the exception because it just happened to work out that way. But guys like Mitchkov, Leo Carlson, and Fantilli, they were right back in the draft class and pretty much just went based on how the first year of this franchise mode went. So they could be anywhere. And we've probably seen them already, but I'm not really paying attention or looking out for them. So they're in there somewhere. Just know that. Lots of abilities on this defensive core here. Not a great goaltending situation, but they make it work. Finishing third in the entire league. 105 points. There's Ovechkin up at the top. 57 goals and 118 points. Yeah, he's already lighting the lamp. No surprises there. I also did kind of notice that the goalies did not have nearly as good of save percentages as they normally do, which is to be expected. Passed a 999 assists. How do you do that? Like, sign him to a PTO, let him play one game and get an apple. Just so he hits the 1,000. You can't retire at 999. That is such a taunt. Anyway, rant done. In 13 playoff games, McDangle got 20 points, so he had his guy, but the Blues did best them in seven games. Round number two there. Again, another player very close to 2,000, but couldn't quite make it. Mitchkov on the line of Ronald McDangle. He's been there for quite a bit, I think, but I was obviously distracted, so just mentioning it now. We got 90 points from McDangle this year, so still putting up good numbers. And obviously, it's all going to add up. And I am just going to say this now. Ronald refused to retire. Absolutely refused. And turned into a bit of a journeyman here as well. Started to sign one-year deals, move around. Playing for Colorado now. And gets himself a President's Trophy, convincingly as well. 118, and the next closest was 103. He also put up 116 points in his season with Colorado here. However, they would be swept in the conference finals by the Dallas Stars. You absolutely hate to see it. 
Trevor Zegris. I just get to 1700. Does that bother anyone else? Is it just me? Yep, just me. You're probably right. Now a member of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Their forwards have lots of abilities. The rest of the team doesn't look outstanding, but they finished third in the Atlantic Division. 91 points is good enough to get them into the lofts. McDangle would be second in the league with 108 points, but only seven playoff games means they were deleted in round number one. It would be at the hands of the Buffalo Sabres. So no luck in the playoffs. Bedard retires, same draft year, and it looks like he spent his whole career in Chicago. So loyalty right there. McDangle, on the other hand, moving again. He is quite literally on the move, playing for the Washington Capitals, and he was a second line center which is strange because of the right wing, left wing position there. But maybe he, you know what? Now that I think about it, he does have 99 face-offs. So that's big brain. They know what they're doing. I take it all back. Ottawa. <laughs> How many teams can you play for? If you guys play Puck Doku, you just got a free answer for every team in the league. Just throw in Ronald McDangle, you're set. Sub point a game for probably the first time in his entire career, only getting 77 points and played the full 82 game season. Our boy remained in Canada, but went out West playing for Calgary, signs a two year $9.1 million contract. Let's see if he can have any playoff luck because we are in year 23. You're running out of time here. No, they finished last in the Pacific division. But he did get 98 points, which is still pretty solid. Can't go wrong there. 128 for Erickson. Absolutely insane. The Coyotes had an easy run in that playoffs as well. Didn't go to seven even once. And Benson had an insane career. Once again, McDangle returning for the last plays Calgary Flames. 93 points in 80 games, which is still good. But how about 140 from Erickson? And then 41 points in 23 playoff games. Still couldn't win the Stanley Cup. Now that is devastation. Another player surpassing the 2000 mark there. Look at all those abilities. It is Halloween candy. And they are handing golds out like it's nobody's business. Year 25. So no matter what, this is it. And they finish second last in the Atlantic Division. Because obviously you can't go farther than 25 years in a franchise mode. We have quite literally maxed it out, and he just didn't tap out. He refused. The infamous mode completed. We completed franchise mode. With the most points in one season being 128, Ronald McDangle put up 2,503 points in 1,938 games. It's a lot of games. That's a lot of points. Did not win a Stanley Cup, though, and really didn't see much playoff success at all. Even with everything boosted... A 99 overall player loaded with abilities coming out of the gate at 99. Drafted at that overall. Couldn't even come close to Wayne Gretzky's record. And he played for 25 years. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. That is the last career sim for NHL 23. We will most likely be doing some on NHL 24. No promises, but I imagine that that is on the horizon. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I will see you soon.